Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Elliot and in this video we're going to look at a classic physics puzzle. The question is, if you have a glass of ice water and you wait around a while for the ice to melt, will the water level have gone up, gone down, or stayed the same? As I showed you in my last video, ice can float on top of water because the density of ice is smaller than the density of water. That's because water expands as it freezes. And so a given mass of water turns into a larger volume of ice. Then the buoyant force of water pushing up is able to support the weight of the ice and it floats. But we saw that only 10% of the total volume is above the surface of the water. The other 90% is lurking down below out of sight. So when the ice that's floating in your drink melts, what happens to the water level? You might think that since the ice is going to shrink as it melts, it'll only fill in part of the hole that it made when it was sitting under the surface of the water, like in option A here. And so the water level would go down. Or maybe it doesn't shrink enough. And since it started above the original water level, when the ice melts, it's still above there and the level goes up, like in option B. Or maybe the level doesn't change at all, like in option C. Go ahead and pause the video for a minute to think about this for yourself. Which option are you going to pick, A, B, or C? Go ahead, I'll wait. Resolving this question is all about understanding the buoyant force, which is what my last video was about. So if you haven't seen that yet, you should go watch it and then come back here to finish. The key thing we learned was Archimedes' principle, which says that if you float an object under the surface of a fluid, it exerts a buoyant force back up on the object, which is equal to the weight of however much fluid was displaced. So let's see how Archimedes' principle quickly clears up this question about melting ice. So here's our glass of water again with the frozen ice cube in it. The cube is going to sink partway down under the surface. So let me highlight the region that's underwater in darker blue here. That's the displaced volume of fluid, which we called V sub F last time. We learned that the upward buoyant force on the ice cube equals the weight of however much fluid would have fit in that dark blue volume. That's the density of the liquid, rho sub F, times the volume, V sub F, times G. So that's the buoyant force. Say our ice cube has mass m. Then, since it's sitting in equilibrium, its weight mg pulling down must cancel against the buoyant force going back up. So when you put the ice cube in the liquid, it starts to sink down under the surface just until it has displaced a volume of water of that same weight mg. So if you forgot about the ice cube and instead filled in this dark blue region with water, it would take the same mass of water, m. Now let's let the ice cube melt. And let's imagine that the water we originally started with is fixed in place, so we can picture just what's going to happen to the melted ice water. Is it going to partially fill in the hole, like option A here? Or is it going to overflow the hole, like option B? Or will it perfectly fill in the hole, like in option C? Hopefully the answer is already becoming clear. When our ice cube of mass m melts, it turns into a puddle of water of the same mass m. But that's exactly how much water would have fit in the region that the ice originally displaced. So the ice melts, and it perfectly fills in the hole it had made with the same mass m of water. The water level does not change. To say it one more time in a sentence, the floating ice displaces a volume of water of the same total weight. But when the ice melts, it turns into exactly that amount of water, and so it fills up the same hole it had displaced to begin with. So that settles it. By applying Archimedes' principle, we show that the water level will not change. And of course, this is an experiment that you can easily do for yourself at home. And I made a little time lapse here to show you what happens. I took a tub of water and put a big block of ice in it. Over the course of several hours while the ice is melting, you can see that the water level isn't changing. So that was a quick puzzle, but a tricky one if you haven't learned about the buoyant force before. So go try that experiment for yourself, hit that like button, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.